Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. I invite you to pick up those Navy folders, sign in, and let us know that you're here. Also, if your contact information has changed, you would like more information about something, or if you have a prayer request, use a connection card found in the pew pocket in front of you. Welcome to our online viewers. If you're joining us through our website, please feel free to download a worship folder or financially support our ministries by clicking on the links above the video. If you are joining us through YouTube, a worship folder is available in the video description or on our website. If you're watching on a smart TV, we invite you to visit our website to view the worship folder, to support the mission of Christ the King through the Give button, or to submit a prayer concern. We do have a community, community concern to share with you this morning. Uh, please uphold in prayer Debbie and uh, Dan Schmoger and family at the death of Debbie's mother, Gisela Stopshinsky. The mobile blood drive is going on this morning. If you didn't pre-register but are willing to give the gift of life, uh, visit the blood mobile for more information. In the narthex this morning, you, uh, you can sign up for a tour of the Reckland Murphy uh, Museum of Art this Thursday. You can get your tickets for the uh, ever popular CTK Who Done It dinner and youth fundraiser on Saturday, April 27th. Uh, you can drop off diapers for Christ Child Society's annual Mother's Day uh, diaper drop and order spring flowers in support of our youth. And I think uh, Lauren McGrath is here to say a little bit more. Hello, Good. Lauren, Good morning, come on Lauren. up. that time of year again, the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and our gardens are screaming. Give us some TLC. Well, do we have a great opportunity for you. CTK is currently hosting its annual flower sale with order forms in the narthex where you can purchase flats, hanging baskets, and pots. The proceeds go to the youth urban plunge that we are taking to Washington, D.C. and New York City. While there, we will be doing God's work with our hands and learning firsthand about urban issues and people face every day in our nation's capital. There are 10 youth and five adults attending the trip, so we have a lot of money to raise. Flower sale orders are due on Wednesday, April 24th, and flowers can be picked up Friday, May 10th. We will even deliver if you can't make it on that day. Also, in the Narthex, they are selling tickets to the Who Done It Dinner, another great fundraiser for our trip. Finally, on April 28th, you will hear more about a program called Work For Your Trip, where you can hire youth for just $10 an hour to help with spring cleaning or any other chores that you don't want to do yourself. So purchase your flowers to beautify your garden and purchase your tickets to enjoy a fun night out here at CTK. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate that very much. And I love that uh, work for your trip thing. I do Lauren, too. Lauren, I have plenty of yard work, so I'll see yep. you soon. <laughs> uh, just a, an FYI, uh, several of you contacted me, us, yesterday. Um, you'd received text that... Uh, I wanted you to send me money so that I could give uh, gifts to the staff. Uh, that was not me. Uh, there's some e-scam going around, and they are using my name, saying, uh, please send us money, and then we'll, uh, so I can buy gift cards for the staff. Um, I would never do that. If, if I was going to ask you for money, I'd do it in person. <laughs> So thank you for that awareness. Yeah. So if people use a different number, a number other than ours, a phone number, or an email, there's really not much we can do about it except raise awareness. So please know if anyone asks you for something like that via text or email, please disregard and delete. Mm -hmm. Now as God's faithful people, would you please stand and greet one another, wish each other good morning and God's peace.
Please uh, join me now in the uh, thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In the desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river of your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Hallelujah.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we invite the young and the young at heart to come join us this morning. Come on up, everybody. All right, Kate, way to go. Way to be brave. Come on, give it up. There we go. All right, another one. There we go. <laughs> He's all right. Come on, Michael. There we go. Well done. So I got some images to show you, and I want to tell me what you see, okay? Are you ready? What do you see? Penguin? What did you guys see? Penguin? Penguin? Anything else? A what? Oh, oh, yin and yang. It does look like yin and yang. Okay. Yep. That is a nice looking yin and yang. Kate, you said you saw a face? Yeah, you see the face there up there too? Face, penguin, yin and yang? Yep. Kimberly says Elvis. Elvis. I yeah. like it. Elvis is in the building. Yeah. All right, let's try this one. What do you see there? A who? A rooster. A rooster. Uh -huh. Yep. What did you see? A mouth. Yeah, a mouth, big red lips. Anybody else see anything different than a rooster and a mouth? Eating a peppercorn? or Peppercorn, yeah, eating a okay. peppercorn. I think that's a peppercorn. All right, what about this one? What do you got there? Two people looking at each other, right? Or is it like a lone black candlestick? You see the candlestick or a chair leg, something like that, a base of some kind? All right, how about this one? What do you see there? 
a bird, like a dove, yeah, or that other thing. You know what that other thing is called? What is that other thing? A, a gramophone Victrola, right? Yep. Yeah, we have to explain that. That's the dark part. The dark part there, yep. Yeah. Okay, how about this one here? What do we got here? What do you see there? Ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Monkey? What else do you see? A tree. A tree, and what else do you see? There's a monkey and a tree. Yeah, and a, a lion. lion. You see the lion over there? See the monkey's, monkey's head is like the lion's mouth, and you go the other way. You see it there? Do you see it? Got it? All right. Oh, how about this one? What do you got there? Upside down guitar. Upside down guitar. guitar. You, you see and, the guitar there? And what else? A, a woman. Witch? Yep. A person. Yep. Yep. And I think this is the last one. Yeah, what do you got there? Elephant? Yeah. Or a nighttime forest scene? Yeah. All right. See, that's the thing with these things. It's, you know, sometimes it takes a while, but you look long enough, and usually you'll see something else that's there, right? And that's sort of what happens in today's gospel story. The risen Christ is standing among the disciples, and they see a person but they don't see Jesus. Then Jesus does some familiar things. He says, peace, and he eats a piece of fish, and then all of a sudden, they look again, and they recognize that it's Jesus standing among them. And sometimes I think that's how it works for us, too. We look, and we see stairs, and an altar, and a piano, and a sky. We don't see Jesus. But every once in a while, if we look not only with our eyes, but also with our heart, and we really look, then we see things like love and peace and Jesus among us. So let's remember to really look, not just with our eyes, but also with our hearts for Jesus who stands among us. All right, if you would all fold your hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, help us look for you Help us look for you. Not only with our eyes. Not only with our eyes. But also with our hearts. But also with our hearts. Amen. Amen. All right, you three. Thanks right, so thanks. much for coming thanks up. Thanks for coming up. Appreciate it very Always much. Always good to see you. The first reading is from Acts chapter 3. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. How 
How long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. The second reading is from 1 John, chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, 
that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be, is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved of God and beloved of each other, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus our brother. Amen. We've just read from the Bible, and now I'm to say a few things about what we've heard. And even though you're probably very interested in what I have to say about biblical interpretation and human nature and the solar eclipse fest at Lutheran Hills last Monday, which, by the way, was awesome, That's not really what you hope this message is about. Like the disciples in today's gospel reading, what you really want is for the scriptures to be explained in such a way that your mind is opened and you see Jesus and you come to believe that these stories say something important for you. In other words, in a sense, we are to relive today's gospel. No, the risen Christ isn't standing in front of us. There's no figure we think might be a ghost. We don't have to reach into our pocket and fish out a snack so Jesus can prove he's real. There's none of that to be had here this morning either. But we have heard a sacred story. We've heard Jesus' words. And in these moments, we pray that our hearts and minds might be opened as Jesus opened the disciples so that we can understand and be renewed, and become witnesses of these things. So here's what I'm wondering. How does that happen? How might we come to some sort of understanding, as limited as it may be? How might we see and come to believe that the risen Christ is here among us? Because the truth is, If we expect some sort of powerful experience every time we walk through these doors or go for a hike or say our prayers, we're bound to be disappointed. Certainly, that's not the way it works. Yet I wonder if what fellow preacher William Williman says is worth considering. He says, maybe we don't see God much because we've lost the capacity to look. Huh. Maybe we don't see God much because we've lost the capacity to look. That begs the question then. As people who tend to trust only in things we can see and touch and chew, and not things that can be dismissed as mere coincidence, how do we learn to look? After all, says Williman, If what's there is God, we shouldn't expect to see it too clearly. In this day and age, how do we learn to look and to see? During my undergrad years, way back when, I took a course in literature and art. At first, looking at slides of old paintings wasn't all that interesting. But then the professors started talking about them. They talked about light and form and color and composition and symbolism. I learned how to look, and I began to see. This is what some of us tried during Lent. We looked at slides of paintings, sculptures, photographs, including this one. Take a look. What do you see? When I first saw this work at the Racklin Murphy Museum of Art, I was drawn to it. Partly, I suppose, because, as I'm sure many of you have seen, it's a modern take on Da Vinci's Last Supper. But the more I looked, the more all of us looked during soup and art, we saw not only similarities, but also things that aren't quite the same as the original. So, look again. I mean, really look. 
What do you see? You may notice that the artist didn't use oil paints. Primarily, he used ashes. Yeah, ashes. The title of this work is Ash Banquet. Part of the reason I was drawn to it then is because I immediately made the connection between the beginning of Lent, Ash Wednesday, and the end of Lent, Monday, Thursday, when Jesus sat with his friends around the table. And that would be enough to say something important for me, especially during Lent. But there's more. This artist lives in Shanghai, in China, and is not Christian. He's Buddhist, devoutly so, it seems. He and his helpers gather ash from the burnt incense rods of Buddhist temples, viewing this material not as garbage, but as the remnants of the prayers of the faithful that he has an obligation to help preserve. Now, what do you see? When we looked at this during Soup and Art a few weeks ago, we thought about the ash from the prayers of those far away as we ourselves were on our way to sing, may our prayers rise before you as incense during Holden Evening Prayer. And we saw the intersection of culture and belief. Then someone noticed the clarity of Jesus' left hand it seemed more defined than anything around it, and took its gesture as meaning, all are welcome. That evening, we saw Jesus dimly through the fog of our own experience. But the more we talked, the more we understood. And the longer we looked, the more we saw. Sometimes something is there, says William Williman, but we can't see it. Our eyes are dulled, or our vision is uninformed, uninstructed, undisciplined to look with appropriate curiosity and intelligence. Maybe we don't see God much because we've lost the capacity to look. Well, if it's any consolation, based on today's gospel reading, that's how it's always been. It was Sunday evening. The disciples of Jesus were huddled together in a room, despondent and anxious over what had happened over the last three days in Jerusalem. Jesus was dead. They had seen him die. It was over. Then they became aware of this stranger standing among them. The strange intruder said, peace. But they felt anything but peace. They were startled and terrified. Most of them thought it was a ghost. The intruder invited them to touch his hands and feet. He was no ghost. The stranger asked for something to eat. Before their wondering eyes, he ate a fish. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And that's when they saw. For the first time, they saw and believed. That's the story. Did it happen exactly as Luke tells it? I don't know. But I do know that this story says something important for me and for you. Think about it. Think about the times when you have heard or seen or sensed something in such a way that your heart and mind were opened, at least more open than they were a moment before. It could be when the scriptures were read, or a meal was shared, or a song was sung, or a conversation was had, or you looked at a piece of art for more than the average 27 seconds, and somehow you saw Jesus dimly through the fog of your own experience, and you felt a peace that you hadn't felt in a while. This I think, is at least partly why we're here. We're not here because we understand everything. We're not here because we have everything figured out and fixed. We're here as those 
waiting for Jesus to come and stand among us. Sometimes, at some level beyond explanation or understanding, that's exactly what happens. Do you see it?
As ones whom Jesus died to save, we're bold to confess the faith of the church with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. By the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty including Bill, Jerry, Wendy, Joe, Kathy, and family, Jim, Diane, George, Lori, Linda, Ann, Nancy, Hillary, Ron, David, Brian, Mark, Paula, Carol, Peggy, Tom, Steve, Nancy, Susan, Jeff, Jeannie, Jim, Joan, Debbie and Dan Smoger at the death of Debbie's mother, Gisela Stopchinsky, and those we name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Please be seated as your gifts and offerings are received this morning.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself away to take our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All is now ready. Please come.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. You prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. As the body of Christ, Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. <laughs>